The Admiral Chester R. Bender Award is given to those that display extreme heroism in the face of danger. No one is more deserving than this year's winners, the Coast Guard Air Station Kodiak Helicopter Crew 6525. On February the 9th, 2007, the brave actions of Lieutenant Commander Joseph Carroll, Lieutenant Devin Townsend, Aviation Survival Technician First Class Willard Milam, and Air Maintenance Technician Second Class John Magapoy resulted in saving the lives of four beleaguered fishermen set adrift from the fishing vessel Illusion off Unalaska Island, Alaska. I was stationed at the time at uh, Air Station Kodiak, and uh, we were on a... Uh, Alaskan patrol deployment aboard the uh, U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Mellon. Well, we were on a mid-patrol break uh, in Dutch Harbor. The ship was uh, tied up. We're back at the ship um, sleeping. We got a call from the district that uh, they had a um, 406 EPIRB uh, uh, hit by a satellite. In the early hours of that fateful morning, the air crew was directed to launch for an activated emergency positioning radio beacon, an EPIRB signal, that was registered to the fishing vessel Illusion in the vicinity of Makushin Bay near Unalaska Island. The time uh, to get the helicopter out of the hangar was uh, a, a task in itself uh, because the town had lost power at the time, so we had to actually manually push these huge hangar doors open, and we had to use flashlights to, to prepare inside the hangar and move the helicopter out of the hangar. After fierce battle with the harsh Illusion elements, the air crew reached the life raft near Makushin Bay. Sitting in the back, it was pretty dark. Um, I couldn't see much in the back, and it was dark. Uh, they were reporting that they saw under NBGs a, a, a steady light and a, and a flashing light, uh, about a half mile apart. And they keyed in on I was trying to look forward and out, the, out to the right, and all of a sudden a red flare come. I saw this red flare glowing, and it kind of was eerie because the cloud cover and all that stuff was glowing red. I was like, whoa, there's a flare. And everybody called off on it, and shortly after that, it was we overflew a raft. And I heard rescue checklist part one for a rescue swimmer deployment. And I kind of looked around in the back of the hell. I remember going like that, looking back in the helicopter, going, I guess that's me. Once you see the flare, it's, it's a complete confirmation that this is a serious SAR case. And uh, our initial reaction was the thoughts of the, the crew, uh, the people on board the raft, how long they'd been there. They must be cold, and the weather was terrible. So our primary concern was was actually rescuing them and getting them to safety. Upon reaching the raft, Milam reported to the pilot that there were four survivors without survival suits. We had the four survival suits in the back and when the swimmer radioed to us that these, these men were in the raft with no survival suits, uh, my co-pilot, uh, Devin Townsend, he suggested that perhaps we lower them the survival suits so they could uh, don the survival suits and that would make it a little bit easier getting them from the raft to the rescue basket because the swimmer would have to take them from the raft into the water and then uh, put them in the basket. While disconnecting the suits from the hook they were on, two of the suits fell into the water and they were rapidly drifting away. Without hesitation, it was Petty Officer Milam who leapt into the turbulent seas, maintaining the hoist hook and two survival suits in one hand and retrieved the ones that were floating away with the other. It was after um when I slid into the off the raft to go get the survival suits that had fallen into the water. Mm -hmm. And when I slid back into the water, I could feel the water flowing into my I mean, it just instantaneously filled up with cold water, and it was taking my breath away. And I thought, all right, things just took a turn for the worse. And then, but as long as the four, there was a brief moment of that, like, oh, no. But then the, the suits were floating away. And I quit. I was like, man, I got to get those suits because without these suits, we're in trouble. Despite the unsettling realization of freezing seawater filling his suit, Petty Officer Milam remained focused on getting the hypothermic mariners into their survival suits. Milam successfully got all four mariners hoisted to the helicopter, himself going up last after the all clear. With the difficult part of the rescue complete and low on fuel, Lieutenant Commander Carroll navigated the helicopter back to Dutch Harbor. Petty Officer Milam was now fading in and out of consciousness during the return flight to Dutch Harbor, and once safely on deck, Milam and the other survivors were immediately transferred to a waiting ambulance.
very cold, and uh, they were obviously out there for a long time, so they were suffering from hypothermia.